Hey everybody, Brandon here from Cat Intentions, and in today's video, I'm going to show you some must know tips and tricks when it comes to creating site plans, in particular, creating dynamic north arrows and scale bars, as well as using fields to take advantage of automated text within AutoCAD. I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. And before we jump in, I want to thank today's sponsor, Plex Earth. You're going to find out a little bit more about them later, so let's jump right in. Alright, so to start, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks using the map tool set within AutoCAD. Uh, you can see it here on their website, and it's a free add on tool set for AutoCAD. If you've got an AutoCAD subscription, you can head over to the Autodesk website and look for the map 3D tool set. You'll be able to add this to your AutoCAD, and it's going to give you a bunch of new features, especially. Uh, useful if you work in the civil field or work with a lot of map or GIS data. It's going to allow some interoperability between different file types and data sources. But in my particular example and in a lot, if you're creating any drawings where you're using a north arrow or a scale bar, you're going to get this new tab up at the top here when using Map 3D add on in AutoCAD. Now, today we're going to look at the north arrow and the scale bar uh, elements here and both of these are going to allow you to dynamically link either a north arrow and or a scale bar to a specific viewport this is going to keep things dynamic so not only are things going to say rotate with the north arrow uh, the scale bar is also going to be adjustable based on the scale you're using in your viewport so first up we're going to add a scale bar to one of our viewports uh, this is going to link directly to a specific viewport. So we're going to use this main site plan area here in the example we created in a video a little while back. I'll create a link in the description so you can go and look at how we created this site plan, key plan, and location plan uh, index map. Uh, it walks you through all the steps to creating multiple viewports at different scales. But to create our scale bar, you're going to click the scale bar button up here. You can choose any of the options available. Uh, I'm using metric for this particular drawing, but it doesn't matter which one you're using. You can choose imperial or metric and a variety of different styles. Uh, for our example, I'm going to use uh, scale bar one metric. It's going to ask me for the viewport that I would like to link this scale bar to. I'm going to choose our site plan one, and then it's going to ask me for the scale bar division. This would be the uh, divisions between the little bars or ticks in the bar. Uh, we're going to make this 10 just to keep it a round number. And the scale ratio, it's already recognized that this viewport is at a 1 to 500 scale. Now by clicking OK, you can see it's going to let me insert my view or my uh, scale bar into my drawing. And you can see that this now is dynamically linked to this drawing. So if we change something, you can quickly and easily update it. Uh, by selecting it and choosing this little drop down here. You can change the properties at any time. And you'll see here if we change the scale of our viewport. So if we unlock it after selecting our viewport and change the scale just for this example here to 100, you can see that it blows up the scale bar uh, to match the scale. So this would be 10 meters here, which is now pretty huge. But the same works in reverse. So if we now scale back out our drawing at one to a thousand, you can see our scale bar has gotten quite small. So this is going to be dynamically linked to the scale of this viewport. This can uh, save from a ton of headache or accidental mistakes uh, if you change your view scale and forget to update your scale bars. Now to fix this, uh, the fact that it's small now or large if you're zooming in, you simply click on it, use the little tools drop down here and change your properties. So since we're using half of the scale, uh, we can double our division number. So now each bar, if we change it to 20, will be back to the regular size that we had it before. And the same goes for if we say zoom in, you would say half or uh, use a tenth. So maybe a one meter spacing if we went all the way in to say a 50 scale. Now I hope that makes sense. But now this viewport and this scale bar are linked. So again, we're going to go back to our 500. This is going to get large. And now by simply changing by using the 
a little tool here, changing our scale view and changing it back to say 10 meters. You can also change that to five. You can make that whatever you want. It's going to make sense based on your viewport. So you could double click in here and do a distance command and say from about here, the end of our scale bar on the left, all the way to the end of our scale bar on the right here, you can see that the distance is 20 meters. Now if I open that up, you can see that the distance I went is 20 meters across in the viewport. And this scale bar is showing that that distance is 20 meters at this scale. So this is a great way to ensure your scale bars are always up to date and accurate. Or even if you're just looking for a quick and easy way to double check your uh, scale against your viewport. Now you can see that with these kind of maps, so a site plan or a site location plan, this is super important. Most cities uh, or districts, whatever you're submitting your drawings to are going to require a scaled site plan, whether it's for subdivision, survey, or uh, proposed works, you're going to need scale bars on your drawings. And to bring things back to our sponsor today, Today's video is sponsored by Plex Earth. I've talked about Plex Earth a few times on the channel before, but if you're not familiar with it, Plex Earth is an AutoCAD and Civil 3D plugin that helps bring additional data and visualization to your project, including imagery, surface data, and integration with Google Earth. You can easily download and install the plugin on their website and unlock up-to-date imagery, terrain, and visualization options instantly. In particular, Plex Earth brings terrain and surface data to AutoCAD and enhances it in Civil 3D. If you've ever needed contour or terrain data for a project design, Plex Earth is a perfect fit. It allows you to simply import terrain data from Google Earth along with other providers and generate contours automatically. By either using the current drawing view or specifying a specific area and grid density, you can then import elevation points and start designing right away, allowing you to get started on a concept or design before you've even been to site, saving time and money in the process. Even if you don't need the surface or terrain data for your specific design, it can create a high quality and visually impressive background for drawings and site plans. Another great feature of Plex Earth is the ability to order a custom drone flight directly from within the app for practically anywhere in the world. They will handle the planning, permits, and equipment for you, providing you with fully processed data down to centimeter resolution for an area of your choosing. If you'd like to learn more and try out Plex Earth, find the link in the description below. And if you're one of the first five people to click the special offer link below, you can get two months of Plex Earth Pro subscription completely free as a special promotion for CAD Intentions viewers. All right, so the next tip and kind of command that you guys need to know if you're making site plans or uh, civil drawings at all, and that is a north arrow. So once again, by going to that layout tab and choosing the north arrow dropdown, you're gonna get a handful of different options by default. You're also uh, have the ability to load a custom north arrow if your company has one. There might be a little bit of tweaking to make sure that the rotation and scaling works, uh, but that is an option as well. Uh, for our example, we're just going to choose one here. I kind of like the look of this arrow 17, it's kind of cool. Uh, Again, you wanna choose a viewport to link your arrow to, and then you're going to place it. Now, depending on the scale of your block and the scale of your drawing, you may need to adjust your scale as needed. You can see mine came in a little bit small over here. So I'm going to open up the properties menu. Let's make it 20 times. Now this is going to depend again on your units and the scale of your blocks. But you can see now that my uh, north arrow is scaled and placed in my drawing. Now the benefit to using a linked or dynamic north arrow is that if you rotate or shift your viewport, your arrow is linked as well. So you can see when I click it or hover over it, the viewport highlights the one that I am connected to. So if we go into our viewport here and we rotate it, so D view, uh, and there are multiple ways you can rotate uh, viewports. I've got a video on that as well, but we're just going to twist and I'm just going to do a uh, 45 degree 
rotation and hit enter. You can see that my north arrow has rotated accordingly uh, along with everything within my viewport, even though my north arrow is not inside my viewport. So this is a great way, I guess I mentioned before, to prevent any accidental issues or discrepancies if you're changing viewport rotation or scale. Both of these objects are now linked to a specific viewport and you can have multiples. So you can link a uh, dynamic north arrow to each viewport in your drawing as well as a specific scale bar to each uh, viewport. This can help prevent a ton of headache and any mistakes if someone else is shifting things around in your drawing or changing views and they don't remember to fix a uh, scale bar or a north arrow. Alright, so the last tip for today's video is about fields. Uh, and if you haven't seen my video on fields within AutoCAD, I'll put a link to that one in the description as well because it's super helpful. But the quick gist of it is that a field is a piece of dynamic text that automatically updates based on a specific object or property within the drawing file uh, and that can vary between uh, drawing titles, names, drawing numbers, uh, areas, all kinds of different things can be linked to a field. In our case we're going to link again a scale but in this case it's going to be the text scale. So maybe you're not showing uh, scale bars but you are showing a text scale on your drawing. Right clicking on the piece of text you want to be linked and choosing insert field is going to bring up the field dialog box and from here you've got a ton of different options but in our case we want to link this field to an object. Again you could use a sheet set which would allow you to create sheet sets that control the names, the titles, and the numbers of your drawings uh, as well as different things like the date and time, the document file path or file name, as well as a ton of other options. In our case we're using objects and then we're going to choose object down here and it's going to let us select it by clicking this select object button here. Now in our case we're going to select this viewport and you can see it knows we've clicked a viewport and we're going to go down and choose standard scale as the property we would like to pull from that object. As you can see here there are a ton of different properties you can pull or use in your dynamic fields. In our case we would like to show the scale. Now choosing standard scale is going to give you a preview here of what it's going to display and we know this is a 1 to 500 scale viewport but hitting OK is now going to place a dynamic piece of text. It's shaded gray because it's a field but that gray hatch or background shade is not going to actually plot. The coloring is simply there to remind you that this piece of text is a field and won't be editable since it is linked to a specific piece of text or object. So you'll be able to see once again that if we change the scale of our viewport, so let's say we zoom in to 1 to 100, uh, our scale bar has automatically updated to the right width and our text in our uh, title here showing the scale has also updated dynamically. So if we simply select our uh, scale bar and go to the little tool icon over here and fix our properties again, let's say we make the divisions on the bar a 1 or say a 5 or a 2, you can see that it's now scaled back down to a more appropriate size. So we can adjust that up. Let's put it to 2. And that looks pretty good. And you can see that the text has automatically gone to 1 to 5 or 1 to 100, changing from 1 to 500 dynamically. So that's it for today's tips. I hope these ones are helpful. They'll definitely save you a ton of time if you're doing site plans or any kind of civil work where you need scale bars, north arrows, or dynamically linked text. Uh, if you guys like this video, don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Plex Earth. I highly recommend them. I use them almost every day. They're going to allow you to instantly import imagery and contours directly into AutoCAD, as well as export your models and designs to visualize them in Google Earth in just a few clicks. It works in AutoCAD and Civil 3D as well as a handful of other software. Use that link up above and down below to get a two month free trial to their pro version right now for CAD Intentions viewers. Thanks again for watching and have a good one. Cheers.